fundamentally a people mover says you don't understand modern contraceptive practices. It is a vehicle for big families. It's a vehicle for families that like doing things together. They have super weekends in the country. They go to theme parks. Just over a decade ago, a totally new type of vehicle emerged. The People Mover. With over 5,000 miles of motorway built in Europe in the last 10 years, the People Mover arrived just in time to provide families with a more comfortable and spacious means of transport. They could be described as living rooms on wheels. One could look at people carriers in terms of the Thatcherite family in which famous speech Mrs. Thatcher said that there's no such thing as society, only individuals and families. And in some ways, the people carrier is a major statement about the value of the family. You can fill it with three generations and the dog. You can hang your bicycles on the back. You can drag it off and it becomes not a way of getting to the site of the holiday, it becomes the holiday itself. And all the time, the perfect family is on view, being meaningful. The most important part of a people mover is the interior. How much space it's got and what you can do with that interior volume. I think that the exterior form of people carriers does imply that the interior is much larger than the space taken up on the outside, almost a TARDIS. The average people mover's interior is 25% larger than a saloon car of the same length. The people mover is often referred to as a multi-purpose vehicle, or MPV, because this extra space allows passengers to feel more at home inside the vehicle, to use it as an office, kitchen, bedroom, or intergalactic shopping trolley, whatever you want it to be. When you got into a vehicle 25 years ago, what were you doing? You were looking out your windscreen and driving someplace. You weren't interested in what was in the vehicle. Today, when you get into a vehicle, or the past 10 years, you drive out of your driveway, <clears throat> you're in the traffic. You bumper to bumper. So what do you do? You start looking around the car. What kind of entertainment value do I have in the car? There's not an awful lot you can do when you're stuck in the back of a saloon car. You can fiddle with the ashtray, you can twiddle the window winders. But the back of a people mover is like being in a playground. There are things you can prod, there are things you can twist, there are things that move. Cup holders have attained an almost mythic significance within people movers. There are designers and engineers at car companies now who take very seriously the idea that you have to get your 32-ounce McDonald's drink through the side window and securely located into the cup holder. These are people who, 10 years ago, were probably hung up on ride and handling on sports cars. The people carrier is much more closely related to product design. I think that some of the imagery, both inside and out, is derived more from product design than from automotive design because it has that same practicality that you expect from a vacuum cleaner or something like that. The interiors of people carriers remind me terribly of those warehouses on the ring road where you buy slightly down market furniture. There's always a terrible guess about how you're going to finish it with six or seven seats, some of which fold and slide, some of which come out. The flexibility of the seating arrangement has become very important inside an MPV. The ability to swivel the seats around, slide them back and forth, pull tables out of the back of them, fold them down to make little flat surfaces. Uh, things are now so complex, so multifunctional and variable that I think people are probably confused about quite what to do with the interior. With gadgets galore and extra legroom, manufacturers would have you believe that stepping inside a people mover is actually like walking onto an executive jet. Because the way that the people carrier is used, often for long trips, there is a temptation to liken it to an ex executive jet. 
I mean, it's obviously a lot slower and uh, doesn't actually serve the same purpose, but there is an opportunity to invest the inside of it with some of those design cues that you would have in an executive jet. In terms of seating comfort, they offer aircraft level quality, but at least business class, if not first class. You do get the impression, looking at the interiors of some people movers, that actually the designers envisaged a day when an air hostess would walk down the center aisle of a people mover pushing a trolley full of duty-free goods. In the event of an emergency, you'll find exits to the rear of the plane, to the left and the right. If oxygen is lost in the cabin, a mask will fall down from the ceiling above you. Please remove your cigarettes, place the elastic over your head and breathe normally. Dreams of flight have always fascinated man. A recurring theme in science fiction, along with bry nylon jumpsuits, is the egg shape, which has an efficient use of space and aerodynamic lines. Car designers call this pure integrated shape the one box. In the 50s, when science fiction illustrators would be drawing the way they thought vehicles would be in the future, they weren't drawing, interestingly enough, they were drawing one box vehicles. They weren't doing this smooth line from the windscreen down to the front of the vehicle. The interesting bit is that that's the way that people carriers have become. Designers have been fascinated by the one box shape ever since car design began. But time and again, the one box failed to take off. No matter how hard they tried, designers just couldn't make it look sexy. As far as most people were concerned, the efficient one box design was basically a bread van. But hey, not all vans are boring. The Volkswagen Combi was brought out as a bog-standard commercial vehicle in 1950. But by the 60s, it had become a handy bedroom on wheels for free-loving Crosby, Stills and Nash fans. The original Volkswagen Combi was a shoebox on wheels. You couldn't make a vehicle like that any simpler. I mean, there's literally nowhere in it that would actually attract dust. This is the VW Combi. I remember it from my childhood. I wondered at the time whether it was from a submarine design or whether perhaps from an airship gondola upside down. Certainly, it was unfamiliar. Was it an early people carrier out of time? It's side windows and front windows like portholes and this beautiful curved shape going across the front and trailing down the sides, suggesting the passage of air or water across the hull. Why was it produced at that time? Was it the perfect carrier in which the new nuclear families of the new consumer age could go on holiday together, could indulge, could consume, could take their adventures as a family unit? Volkswagen sold over four million of their shoebox on wheels. Maybe it was this runaway success that inspired other car companies, spotting the potential market, to have another stab at the one box idea. Interesting is, that the uh, first uh, single volume uh, people carrier was actually the Fiat Multipla, a vehicle designed or built on the Fiat 600 platform, very small, very egg-shaped like, uh, one, one volume for six people. And it was popular in Italy as a uh, transport for large families, but it somehow didn't inspire the industry to expand that concept. In the early 1970s, disaster struck the motor industry. The price of oil rose by a thousand percent in just four years. Frustrated motorists queued for hours for a few meager gallons of petrol. Not a free tumbler in sight. Sales of motor cars plummeted, and many car companies were on the brink of bankruptcy. 1973, oil embargo, crash, bang. Everything in Detroit stopped. Everybody went home. Everybody was traumatized. Chrysler had to come up with a new product. We were dying in the marketplace. They turned to styling. We are at that time, we're looking at the concept of a people carrier. The concept was a radical one. It had to be. 
The future of Chrysler was riding on it. We called it the super wagon because of the economic condition in the world, the crunch, the pressure, the passion. It just seemed unnatural to call it super wagon. After Superman, because Superman, as you remember, leaped tall buildings in a single bound, was faster than a speeding bullet. And this car, this vehicle, this people carrier, had to meet those objectives. And I think if we look back over 25 years, we can see that it met those objectives. It leaped tall buildings. It was faster than a speeding bullet and of a success in the marketplace. Today, witness an extraordinary moment. The emergence of a concept so new, so advanced, so entirely different that it surpasses definition in contemporary terms. The totally new Plymouth Voyager. Launched onto the American market in the early 1980s, the Voyager effectively saved Chrysler. The all-American family quickly fell in love with the new people mover concept. If the Waltons had been around, they'd have bought one. Today, over five million Voyagers have been built, and it is known within Chrysler as the Blessed Box. But while the Voyager was still in development, Art Blakesley transferred to Chrysler's UK office, where he would lead a team of designers working on a people mover for Europe. This time, the idea would be even more radical and forward-thinking. We were trying to establish what we would call a new template. There's a difference between style and design. And if you think of a, a fountain pen, for instance, a fountain pen has one design, but 5,000 styles, a million styles. So we were looking for that first template, that first concept, which is a design statement. Well, of course, from the original concept sketch, you can see some of the characteristics of today's people movers. That's the very fast sloping front and the very low waistline, very deep glass on the side of the vehicle for the pleasure of looking out. And at that time, we were very excited. We thought we were doing something useful and responsible for the buying public because here was one vehicle that you could do everything in. Arthur Blakesley uh, wanted to generate some team spirit and he came out with a, uh, either a fortunate or unfortunate phrase one day, which was, if you guys follow me, you'll end up farting through silk shorts, which we all thought was jolly amusing. So the very first mock-up concept vehicle actually had the silk short as a name written on the side. The Silk Short vehicle was being developed in conjunction with the French aerospace firm Matra. But when Chrysler closed their UK office in 1978, the People Mover project was sold off and passed around the French motor manufacturers before finally emerging in 1984 as the Renault Espace. When it was launched, the Renault Espace was a terribly futuristic vehicle. It was rather like the Mini in that it sort of appeared fully formed. And generally, the vehicles that have followed the Espace have taken its blueprint and moved on a little bit. It was a genuinely trend-setting vehicle. The trend-setting looks of the Espace have since been smoothed off to give it a more aerodynamic shape. But it retains its groundbreaking features. The Espace has all those elements that really make up the visual appearance of this kind of car. The way that the windscreen, for example, follows through in a line that's exactly the same down the bonnet of the car, so that you get this continuous form from the top right down to the bumper. That's something that's nice for designers because designers have always been looking for a way at making the most integrated, the kind of smoothest and cleanest shape they can, and the people carrier gives you good opportunities to do that. The overall form of the people carrier allowed designers to escape from the longer, lower, wider philosophy, which for years had sort of ruled car design. Suddenly, the height no longer matters. In fact, the height is one of the indicators that this is a people carrier. And coupled with the height is 
the different proportion you get in the side glass. You get much more side glass relative to the depth of the body. Changes the vehicle when you're inside it from just being transportation into an adventure. Renault's market research showed that the adventurous spirit of the Espas appealed to a younger, richer, better read consumer. Other manufacturers have also found that those individuals who buy a people mover are different from other car drivers. They're more likely to be university educated, to have a professional or managerial job, and they're more likely to be women. Most cars are sold as macho appendages. They're pretty well always aimed at blokes. Now, you can't really do that with a people mover, so one of the problems with them is that they all end up being slightly cuddly. This new category of people mover, I think, appeals to an intelligent emotion. It's a more self-oriented emotion. What do I want? I want to feel comfortable. I don't want to impress. This is the Volkswagen Sharon. It's one of the most recently introduced so-called MPVs, multi-purpose vehicles. In my opinion, it is one of the most elegant of the MPVs, and it has the definite styling cue of an MPV, which is the fast front, basically in one line from the top of the screen to the bumper. And the balance of the elements, this part of the bonnet, grill and lamps in a horizontal format, and the bumper, which is particularly car-like and not at all commercial, is very successful in reducing the visual height of the vehicle. But no matter how many car-like features the designers add, there's just no getting away from it. Most people movers still bear an unfortunate resemblance to, well, red vans. To the designer of a one-box vehicle, the real problem is, how do I try and put some real drama into its shape without taking away from its interior form. How do I stop this looking like a bread van? It's a modern piece of styling. It's a very contemporary form. But unfortunately, it tends to be a little bit too narrow for its height, which gives it a pinheaded appearance and uh, makes it look a little bit too much like a van. The reason it looks pinheaded from the rear is uh, mainly due to the lack of breakup of the whole of this rear door. The rear lights are too far apart. There's nothing breaking up the middle of this uh, area here. The main reason that the Nissan Serena is um, as narrow as it is is because of the requirements of its home market, the Japanese market where they have a tax system which is based on the uh, width of the vehicle. In a hundred years, the saloon car has adopted many different styles and fashions. The same cannot be said of the people mover during its short 10-year history. Designers don't have the chance to look back through history and find design cues that help them define this kind of vehicle. They are inventing those cues and I think when you look at a lot of them, you can see that that's quite hard work. Since the birth of the Espace, the people mover market has been expanding rapidly, with sales in Europe now five times higher than in 1986. But with eight new people movers coming onto the market in 1995 alone, manufacturers are driven to extremes to make their product stand out from the crowd. The new Honda Shuttle has decided to break with the one-box tradition and cunningly disguise itself as an estate car. It has a lower roofline and a more obvious bonnet than its rivals. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? Is it a spaceship? No, it's just a Honda Shuttle and it really doesn't know what it is. This area very clearly demonstrates the schizophrenic nature of the Honda Shuttle. There's a break here between the windscreen and the bonnet that's neither as positive as you would expect in a saloon car, nor as continuous and smooth as you might expect in a people carrier. The result is that we're not sure if this is a bonnet in the conventional sense, or is it a less than successful attempt 
at the smooth integrated front end, which is more typical of this kind of car. The Japanese need hardly worry about alleged schizophrenia. In Japan, the Honda Shuttle not only outsells all other people movers, but is Honda's overall bestseller. Today, almost every major car company in the world has a people mover in their range. Even Mercedes' proper-shaped cars, Benz, is developing a futuristic multi-passenger one-box vehicle. But the only person to try and take the people mover to another dimension is the Italian designer Gigiaro with his Columbus concept car. The Columbus is simply the people mover in cinema scope. It's an enormous vehicle. Uh, it has a kind of bubble on the roof. And when Gigiaro created it, he was just trying to find out how big you can make a people mover. I think he's probably made it too big, but I still think that it makes more sense than a limousine. You could almost see it becoming an alternative to the Pope mobile. I believe the one box is the most sensible and functional vehicle because the passenger and luggage areas are very spacious. You could say that a one box car cannot be interesting, but we should remember that it is a rather new concept and there is still plenty of time to develop the idea. In this case, development is made easier by the dimensions of the car. Being larger than anything we have seen so far, this model has been specially designed to show the extent of imaginative solutions that can be poured into a vehicle of this type. The overall design of this one-box vehicle is rather different. To start with, the passengers are our main concern. Then there is the body, which has an insert for the upper part, which we can do because of the central engine position. Therefore, this area for three people, the driver and the two passengers, receives the preferential treatment. It is slightly higher, like the cockpit of a jumbo jet. Then we have this strong shoulder which gives the feeling of strength and in order to soften this part here we have this horizontal raised section which makes it softer and stronger at the same time. The door is very distinctive. It opens in a gallowing fashion which makes it easier to get into the car. As in any MPV, the seating and the space are very important. Plus, the main feature of this vehicle is its luxury, because the seats are wider and they swivel, and they allow people to move around or to go through to the driver's area. I believe that in the future this type of vehicle will replace the limousine. I would say that for the Pope or a president of a republic who wants to stand up, there are no problems. On the contrary, this vehicle lends itself perfectly to public events and it can even be made bulletproof because being so strong and large, it can support the weight of the armor plating. If it was social change that brought the people mover into existence, then social change could also be its undoing. Demographics are not shifting in its favor when a quarter of all couples in Europe have no children. What I'm, I wonder about is that during, at a time when families tend to get smaller and smaller, a vehicle which started out as a vehicle to transport the whole family at once seems to become so popular. Ten years ago, it genuinely looked for a while as though people movers would displace the saloon car entirely. But that's not going to happen. I don't think there are enough caring, sharing, green, liberal people to actually go out and buy them.